Guys, this is it. Finally, I've been threatening for such a long time. But I've got myself a, a new toy. I've got myself a camera. So this is it. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Cringing at myself already. Friends, I have been overthinking this for so long. I've wanted to vlog for ages, but in my tiny little brain, all I worry about is thinking of, of enough content and staying consistent. And, you know, I know how much work it is. I know that editing is time consuming, but if I don't start, I'm never going to. Um, so what I've done is is paid a stupid amount of money for this insane camera, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. I went for the DJI Pocket 3, DJI Osmo Pocket 3 Creator Combo, and I'm obsessed. So in my head, you know like when you join the gym and then you buy a new like gym outfit, or if you've been going for a while and you're a little bit like <laughs> meh, and then you buy some new trainers, it makes you want to go again. This is kind of like that vibe where I'm like, it's all so exciting. Um, and I just said to Ian earlier, like, right, on Saturday, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna do my first YouTube video, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, no, hold on a minute. Do it now. Why not? Why not? Because my thinking is, if I have to think about it, dress up, do my makeup, feel like, presentable and doled up that's not the kind of vlogging that I want to put out there so I'm not going to start off on that foot because I won't be consistent with that there might be some occasions where I've got a nice outfit on but 89% of the time no let's go 93% of the time I'm going to be looking like this like a mole um because I'm a mother to a six month old. Um, and I wash my hair probably once a week. So that's what you're getting. Can we just talk about this camera just for like two seconds? I'm so impressed because it looks as if I have a cameraman in my kitchen, but I don't. I don't. It just tracks my face and follows me around. I, am I like late to the game or am I getting old or is this mind blowing? Because my little mind is gone. I have lost me it. Um, so very impressed with this camera. Um, and it's not too big as well, because I know that with vlogging, um, I want to do as much as possible. I want to do loads of like a day in the life. And if I do like days out, etc., etc., which means I have to vlog in public. And that is every vlogger's fear. Um, whereas with this teeny tiny little camera, um, it's kind of like the same. Well, it's, I think it's even smaller than my iPhone. Um, so I'm just going to look like I'm just like on FaceTime. Guys, I'm just on FaceTime to my mum. Okay. I'm not vlogging. Um, not that there's anything to be embarrassed about, but I'm just quite an introverted person and I just. Um, get embarrassed so no excuses now and I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna go for it so enough chit chat um this vlog is a question and answer because um again as one does I was overthinking <laughs> and I thought what on earth am I gonna do for my first video and then the easy option is to go actually I'm gonna ask Instagram I'm gonna ask my wonderful gram fam um what do you want to know? Why do you want to know? I'll tell you anything. Um, so I've got a load of questions to go through. So this vlog in particular, slightly boring in the sense of, I'm probably just going to be sitting here in my kitchen the entire time. So I will mix it up in future. But right now, we've got some questions to answer. Okay? Right, here we go. So these are some of the questions. I didn't get millions, to be fair. I didn't get tons just for full transparency. Um, but I definitely got enough and I probably won't even get, I'm not gonna get through all of them. So I'm gonna pick my favorite ones. Um, but just to start with, just in case anyone is completely brand new around here, I'm assuming you've followed this vlog link via my Instagram. So I'm assuming you know my name, but you might not. 
because you might stumble across this at a later date. So um, my name's Chelsea <laughs> and I am a mother of a six month old. So I'm currently on maternity leave. Um, I am getting married in December um, to the love of my life. The love of my life, whose name is Ian but it's spelt I-A-I-N, which leads me really nicely into one of these questions. Where is it? I can't remember where it is now. But someone's asked, why do you call him Two Eyes? Because I will always refer to him as Two Eyes. It's because he's got two eyes in his name and everyone misspells it. They either misspell it or they call him Lane. Lane. Um, so yeah, it is just in fact because there's two eyes in his name. So if I ever talk about two eyes, that's my fiance. And um, we're getting married in December. Um, my beautiful little girl is Goldie. So let me pick a question. What should we go to first? What is your job? Where do we begin? No, so I'm one of those people, I have kind of had a few different lives. Um, so when I was younger, and I'm going back this far because I did actually work when I was a child, um, I was an actor, I was a child actor. Um, and I was in that world up until around the age like 20, 21. So that's where I like did my schooling. Um, I was a stage school kid and um, I went to college. Um, I went to Doreen Bird College and did musical theatre. Then I went, um, I didn't actually graduate from there though. Um, just because it wasn't the right college for me. So then I went to a music college in Brighton um, and I've got a diploma in singing, which I've used loads. <laughs> um, and then I fell into, when I realised I needed to earn some money, <laughs> I fell into fitness, um, which I am so grateful for. So I was doing it for my own fitness and loved it and thought, you know what, I could, I could be that instructor because... I was looking at the instruction and I was like, there's like a performing element to that. Um, and yeah, and I did fitness for 10 years, um, health, nutrition, um, various different classes, personal training. I worked for someone else and then I worked for myself and built my own business called Fit Peach, um, which I absolutely loved. That kind of all went Pete Tong upside down, out of choice, but yeah, during the strange vid times um can i say the c word <laughs> and um then i met ian during covid and um so we've only known each other like coming up three years which is crazy um just around my 30th birthday and then me and two eyes decided to move to london um just for a bit of a change bit of like neutral ground he's originally from wigan up north i am down on the south coast so we were doing long distance for a short period of time because we moved in pretty quickly together. Um, and then, yes, we moved to London and had a bit of an adventure there. We only stayed a year, um, it wasn't for us. Um, then I moved, we moved back down south near my family and not long after that I fell pregnant. Um, whilst I was pregnant, I worked at a local factory, a local car manufacturing factory. Um, and so, yeah, my life's a little bit all over the place, if I'm honest. When I go back to work, I'm gonna go back self-employed, I think. Um, I think that's what's gonna be most flexible and work around myself and babe. Yeah, I'm on maternity leave until sort of the middle of the year. So I'm just trying to enjoy that as much as possible. And then I'll figure out what the hell I'm gonna do then is the plan. Does that answer your question? Question two, how did you and the two eyes meet? Um, he slid into my DMs, didn't he? Um, which is true, that is factual. However, it wasn't like a complete random act to slide into my DMs. Um, we both worked for, um, or we both had our own like businesses in a nutrition company. Um, I didn't know he existed, if I'm completely honest. However, he'd seen me at like three different events that we'd both been to. 
So we've crossed, we'd crossed paths without even knowing, or he knew, um, and he, because I used to speak on, on stage and do training, and still to this day I take the piss because I'm like, why didn't he come and speak to me? Why not? I think one of the events, he was single and I wasn't, one of the events I was single and he wasn't, but then one of the events we were both single and that's the one I'm like, well, clearly didn't fancy me that much, did you? Because you just didn't come and talk to me. Um, yeah, so I never let him live that down. Um, but he slid into my DMs and replied to, he replied to one of my stories um, and it was quite like an essay. Um, and I was like, oof, deep, yes, let's talk. Question three, when am I going to bump into you in home bargains? <laughs> Probably quite soon because I go ever so often, ever so often. If you see me in home bargains, come and say hello. How's it going giving Goldie solids? Are you giving purees, baby led weaning or both? Um, it's very early days. So the last sort of two, three weeks, um, I wouldn't say that I've been doing weaning. I have been doing first tastes because she's showing signs of readiness. Like everything's ticked off. But whenever I've given her something, she's not really responding she's not really like excited about it or actually eating anything she'll just taste it pull a funny face and then spit it out which is extremely normal I know um so yeah I'm just trying like a new thing every day or two um up here I've got Goldie's first 100 foods uh, which I got off Etsy which is cute as so I have started to obviously fill it in with little tastes but I can't wait to start filling that up and um, I'm really hoping to do baby led weaning I say hoping like it's my my choice I just need to do it and um, that is the aim um I'm not at all against purees um and I might you know obviously make a few of my own um but I quite like the idea of just making a family meal that's suitable for everyone and giving it to her to just explore and make a mess, which I never, ever thought I would say, ever. I thought I'd be, I, I watch videos of like toddlers eating spaghetti bolognese and it gives me pure anxiety. And, I'm, and I literally thought I was gonna be that mum that was like, no, absolutely not. I'm going to spoon feed you. But now I'm in the position that I'm in myself. I know my kid. Um, it's just so different when it's your kid. Um, I'm not saying I'm going to give her a spag bowl next week, but yeah, we're going to have some fun with it. Um, I like the idea of like the fine motor skills and stuff as well with baby lead weaning. Um, so I guess a bit of both. I guess a bit of both. You seem to be really happy with Goldie. Did you have any baby blues? Um, I have to say I was extremely, extremely lucky. I didn't get any postpartum blues. Um, and I know so many people do. Um, obviously post birth, I was extremely hormonal and the few days after I was crying over absolutely nothing, but I wouldn't say I necessarily felt blue, felt down, felt low, felt sad. I just couldn't control my emotions. Um, when I found something funny and I was laughing, tears would fall out of my face. Like it was the most bizarre feeling. You know, there's that video of that kid that's like, laughing but crying like <laughs> that was a terrible example but you know what one I mean that was literally me I didn't know where I was laughing or crying oh did you and two eyes have any trouble conceiving how long did it take um I've said this quite a lot on Instagram so apologies if I'm repeating myself um at the time it felt like the longest time in the world um it took us seven months I had the coil in previously so I had the coil out at the end of May um and obviously my body had to regulate and sort itself out and I fell pregnant end of December so that was the time span for us which obviously now looking back and in hindsight is no time at all but at the time it, it it's so hard and I, my heart goes out to anyone who is struggling to conceive because especially as women like we've we spend our whole lives trying to not get pregnant and putting like various hormones inside us to do so, um, which isn't fun in itself. And then as soon as you decide you want a child and that switch has flipped, it's not as easy as like, yeah, here you go. 
and you just don't know. You have no clue. If someone was going to tell you, right, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be um, about 18 months, like you will fall pregnant, but it's going to be about 18 months. Is that okay? At least then you're like, well, I know it's going to happen at some point. But when you don't know, it's just, it's just horrendous. But yeah, we were very lucky is what I'm trying to say. It only took us seven months. Um, I haven't gone any on any um, other form of contraception. Um, I haven't gone back on the coil. Uh, we're just being super, super careful. I think, like what I say, I think we're going to try for, we're going to try for our next babe after the wedding. So that's why I didn't want to go back onto anything to then come back off it and my body be like, what's going on? So let's just hope I don't get pregnant before the wedding because I do not want to be, uh, well, I've already got my dress, so <laughs> it's got to fit. It's got to fit. Um, next question. The best thing that helps you get through labour? Good question. I'll be completely honest with you. It's such a bloody whirlwind. Um, my birth experience was wonderful. I loved it. I was very lucky. Um, I had an all natural birth, which is what I wanted. The only thing I didn't have that wasn't kind of part of my plan, I really wanted a water birth. The reason why I couldn't have a water birth is because my waters broke at 36 weeks plus one day. So I needed to be constantly monitored, which meant I couldn't be in the water. Um, so yeah, it was a huge shock. So from 4am in the morning when my waters broke, I'm giving you like my full birth story now, but I'll just, I'll keep it, I'll keep it safe. Um, uh, then around 7am I started getting um, light contractions, but everything progressed rather quickly. Um, I think in total my entire labour was like eight hours, which um, <laughs> some of you mamas are going to hate me for that, who's been in, who, who were in labour for days. Um, so it all happened really quickly. I was in shock because obviously wasn't expecting the babe to come that soon. However, I was hugely into hypnobirthing. Um, I followed like the Positive Birthing Company and I watched all their videos and everything. Um, so I loved like all the breathing techniques. Um, that really, really helped me. I had the app Freya, um, which is such a simple idea, but it's genius because it tells you, you, you just tap the screen when you're having a contraction and it times it for you. Um, but it also tells you when to breathe and like how long to breathe for. And like, so you were literally following it. Um, and it tells you when you're in established labor and stuff as well. So the Freya app, I highly recommend. Obviously having a good birthing partner. Um, Ian was incredible. He got a bit freaked out by right, right towards the end more. So he was more worried about me than he was the baby. Um, just because you are in this, just because you're in this whole other world. And I was mooing, I was mooing like a cow. Um, but it was like, I don't know, I guess it's like a weird animal instinct. But I loved it. I absolutely loved labour. I can't wait to do it again. Next slide, please. How, oh, this is a good question. How are you finding fitting in fitness with cutie pie? Right. Full transparency here. Full honesty, which um, as someone with a huge amount of fitness background um, is not too proud to admit that I have not done anywhere near as much as I wanted to, forward slash expected to. Um, I did go back to exercise after, I think it was around 10 weeks, something like that, when my body felt ready anyway. Um, and I, I, I did, I was doing yoga, I was doing HIIT, I was doing dance workouts. So I was doing a mix of cardio strength and yoga. I did something like almost every day, right to the lead up to Christmas and I loved it. Um, and I was feeling like good again and strong and fit, etc. Um, and then I had a couple of like weird, I think I had some breastfeeding like issues. So like my boobs were agony um, and then an ingrown toenail, <laughs> all the excuses coming out now. Um, and then Christmas happened and all this stuff. And I'm going to be honest with you, since Christmas, I've done shit all and I hate it and I miss it. I miss feeling strong and fit. So just you asking me that question has really, really helped. The reason why I'm struggling to fit it in is because obviously we're establishing our routine with a baby. So I'm not going to be hard on myself, but in between her wake windows, when she is napping, I've been trying to do as much social media as possible because I'm really trying to, you know, again, full transparency, I'm trying to get my social media off the, off the ground. Um, so 
I've been really working on like reels, content, ideas, filming, editing. It all takes time. It really, really does. And um, you have very small windows with a child to do that in. So any window that I've had, I've been doing socials rather than fitness. What I need to do is balance out the two because um, I can merge the two as well. So I'll find my balance with it. Um, but if you're struggling to fit it in as well, you're not alone. You're not alone. But just you asking me that question is giving me a kick up the ass. So thanks. Someone has asked though, what is best fitness for in the house while baby sleeps? Sleeps, Which is what I was doing and what I will do and what I recommend. So obviously YouTube is absolutely incredible. The only thing with YouTube is you need the discipline to do it yourself. Um, because no one is like telling you to do something at a certain time so if you've got the discipline to do it in a nap um in a baby's nap then amazing you've got everything on youtube whether you want to do hit whether you want to do yoga um what i love is like doing like a 30-day challenge so following one person um and and working building your way up and doing the 30 days in total even if it's not every single day it's something to follow so it feels like a bit of a a challenge that's that you complete that's more rewarding at the end if you need someone there at a certain time because otherwise you won't do it then there's so many like online coaches and stuff like it is something I'm going to be doing in the future but I'm not doing it now um but there's so many amazing ones out there that are classes at 6 p.m or something so as long as you've got childcare at that time because you can never rely on a baby sleeping oh there's the question I missed why you call Ian two eyes and it's bugging me <laughs> There's two eyes in his name. A couple of these questions have been like doubled up. How did you meet Ian? How many siblings do you have and how many would you like for Goldie? Um, so I personally have one. So I have one older brother. For Goldie, honestly, we'd have a whole football team if we could. If it wasn't for the wedding, we'd try again now, genuinely. Um, but like I said previously, I don't want to be pregnant for my wedding. Um, but genu genuinely, it comes down to practicality and finances because kids are obviously expensive and it doesn't just affect like, and, and not in a sense of just how many kids you've got to feed. It's like your house, your car, everything that comes with it. So if money is no object, we would love to have like four kids. Basically, I just want to be Stacey Solomon. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll have two and see, hopefully three, hopefully four. And then we'll see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I do. I want a little, I want a little gang. I want a lush little George gang. Why not? Expectant mama here. Want to breastfeed but don't want to co-sleep. Any tips? Do you know what? Well, we've we've never done co-sleeping. Um, I'm not against it, and I totally get that there are safe ways of doing it. I think it's excellent. Um, I say I haven't co-slept. There's been a few mornings when Ian's got out to go to work nice and early. Gigi's woken up and she doesn't want to go back in her cot or whatever and I don't want to wake up at 5am. So there's been a few times that we've done that um, just in the morning just to give me an extra hour or two. But generally, yeah, it's, it's not necessary. So I've got, um, or not necessary unless you want to, but I have a next to me like everyone does obviously um so it's it, it is great when you're breastfeeding because you just literally grab babe put babe on boob um burp put them back so how exciting for you that you are expecting baby uh good luck with everything please message me or reach out if you need any like just friendly support i am no expert with breastfeeding but i feel like i had every problem and hurdle along the way um, and I managed to somehow push through them and keep going and I'm so pleased because now breastfeeding feels like the easiest thing in the world but you just have to get past the tough stuff and it, it is tough I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you um, it is tough at the start but once you get to know your babe your babe gets to know you they get to acquire the skill and the strength um, it's just it's, it's pretty epic, I'm not gonna lie. It's been my favorite thing. And I really hope I can breastfeed all my babies. Slightly different question here. Tips for maintaining weight after loss. Um, so I'm assuming that you've been through a weight loss journey and now you're wanting to maintain. So the most important thing to know um, is you've done the hard work. You've done it. 
You've done the hard work, you've done the deficit. So what you need to do is maintain habits, but create a balance. So no, you don't have to be as strict as um, potentially you were during the weight loss phase. Um, But also don't go back completely to old habits because you will just literally reverse everything you've just done. So it's just about literally balancing it out. Right, final question, guys. Do you struggle sometimes being a mum? You always look like you have your shit together with it all. Um, Of course I struggle. Of course, there is not one mother or father out there that doesn't struggle at some point. Um, I definitely don't always have my shit together as well. But what I will say is that I, I just, I love it so much. So, so much. I love the good and the bad. Today I met my friend in the woods and we went for a walk. And just as I got there, she had a massive shit explosion. I had to strip her in the back of the car, trying not to get shit everywhere. And she's at that stage where she doesn't want to lie on her back nice and chill. She wants to roll over the place, but I don't want her to roll everywhere with shit everywhere. Um, So, yeah. You've just got to take the good with the bad, the sweet with the shit. And of course, at times like that, sometimes I have all the patience in the world and I can laugh it off. Sometimes I literally have so little patience. I'm like, oh my God, someone take this child off me. There's been a couple of occasions where like Ian's coming from work and I'm literally just handing him the child like, (sighs) take your daughter from me. Um, So a million percent, we all struggle. We all struggle. Everyone does. If they don't, they're porcupine. And also... None of us have a clue what we're doing, especially first time round. We are all 100% winging it. So if I seem like I've got my shit together, um, it's just it's just a good day and I'm having a good time and I've probably got lots of support around me and um, and Goldie's done something cute and funny, but um, not every day is like that. Which is actually an ideal way to end this first vlog by me saying, um, I will be as raw and honest as possible. Yes, I'm gonna give you some good signs good signs but I'm also going to give you um the ugly stuff as well on the bad days I'll be as honest as possible um if you follow me on socials for a while you'll know that yeah you, you do get uh, full transparency with me and explicit language fucking love a swear word just feel like it shows passion you know so on that note if you like this video please subscribe <laughs> like and subscribe I don't even know what that means I don't but do it anyway please because that's what all the others say do you know what I mean if you could possibly share this on your socials um, just just my channel in general I would just be beyond grateful um, to try and help me get the word out about my vlog so thank you for your questions I really appreciate it have a wonderful rest of your day or evening and uh, I'll see you on the next one I need to work out how I'm going to end these videos because otherwise I'm just going to literally be so cringy. I can't be like, like and subscribe. See you on the next one every time. I just can't. I can't do it. So I'll, I'll think of, um, maybe I'll have a theme tune. No, let's not do that. Okay, bye.